Okay, hello everyone, it's uh, Anthony here at the desk at Amplify Trading. Um, slightly different session, so not specifically talking about something in markets that's going on right now, although um, the pound has just dropped quite dramatically on the back of some latest comments to do with Brexit, but we'll leave that for a, a different briefing. Purpose here is I'm catching up with a former uh, trainee at Amplify that we had back in 2015. So you might remember um, Amplify Trading featured on a BBC documentary, as I'm showing on my screen uh, to the side of me, called Millions by the Minute. This was back in 2015 when it was aired. And one of the main people that was featured on that program was a chap called Ben Marsh. And Ben trained with us, and this was a number of years ago now, and I've been fortunate enough to have Ben make his way out from the countryside to come and join me and what I thought I'd do is just record a catch-up just a very informal conversation between me and Ben just about what he's been up to what he's been trading uh, I thought it might be very beneficial for those a interested in potentially looking to learn to trade and for those who are, are more experienced and just learning from another guy of experience uh, in that essence so we'll transition over Ben, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's good to be back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been... Wait, how many years was it when you were last in the office? It was over five years ago, five, six years. And I got to the age where five years goes past in a heartbeat, which is a little <laughs> bit scary. <laughs> but, you, I mean, it's... I suppose me being here will answer a question that anyone that watched the documentary would, would have, which is, is he still doing it? Yeah. Because, obviously, this is a business where... You know, the failure rate is way over 90%. Yep. And for very good reason that, as I'm sure all the people training with you will discover, trading itself is not that difficult, but the psychological side mm. is almost impossible. And even when you start to master it, you still get the chattering voice telling you to do all sorts of bad stuff, prospect yep. theory and all this sort of thing. And it's developing the discipline because for most people the fantasy of trading is one that I can live in a world of freedom you know boundaryless mm. endless possibility the only way you can survive in it mm. is to create a really really strict set of parameters and rules right. and you never deviate from them yeah and certain things you never do you never do an impulse trade because again at the beginning you imagine well if I do an impulse trade it must have a 50 50 percent chance of success right mm. things either go up or down mm. no they almost never work and even if they do you've actually still got to see it as a bad trade because you didn't follow your rules and it was luck and it was you know taking a punt I, I almost feel like I need to roll you out at the beginning of every time yeah, that yeah, we yeah. stand in front of a new group of traders because you know certainly this is something we always communicate prior to them starting the course but also the first day yeah but then obviously as you've probably experienced whether yourself or other people you've seen yeah. you know, human nature is it almost takes getting burnt totally to have this realization well it's a bit like as a new dad hence the fact i'm looking so tired not <laughs> trading but when you you suddenly realize you know your parents always tell you loads of stuff when you're a kid and you're like yeah yeah whatever yeah you suddenly realize later in life do you know what actually they were right mm. And, you know, there are certain fundamental things in trading that you cannot avoid. Don't overtrade. Don't make your stops too tight. Mm. Don't impulse trade. Um, you know, you've always got to have a very clear plan of what you're doing. If you break any of these rules, you will lose money. If you're trading to make your ne next mortgage payment, don't do it. Mm. Because you will make a terrible series of decisions. As soon as you equate... Yep. M it with money or if I do this I can buy my girlfriend a new BMW whatever it is you will start doing things for the wrong reasons mm. and if you do it for the wrong reason it will result in costing you an awful lot of, ma of money and with leverage cost you still yeah, more yeah, yeah. of course of course and I mean people say it's like gambling it's actually infinitely worse because gambling you know what you're going to lose <laughs> you know trading you can lose and I've, I've watched people you know, you've got to be able to take the time. Amplify offers great training, but the only way to become good at it is to do it. Yep. And again, you've got to do it with real money. You can be the best mm. um, sort of SIM account trader in the universe. Yeah, yeah. It means nothing because when mm. 
you're there and it's your cash on the line mm. and you start to get those feelings in your stomach or whichever other organ you want to pick you know again the impetus to do crazy stuff mm. you know can become overwhelming mm. until you've got the discipline mm. and you need the length of time to be able to see it as a steer you know for example if I'm trying a new setup I'll, I'll set myself 25 attempts at it and I'll look at a period of 25 attempts of that setup to see if it's worthwhile. Right. Now, clearly, if the first 18 don't work, you say, yeah, they're not looking so good. But you've got to remove yourself from the thing which, when you start trading, if it goes your way, hey, I'm a genius, yeah, if it yeah. goes against you, I'm useless. So, so I guess on that point then, from you having traded for now several years, yeah. uh, what, you know, what part of your development did, that, did, you, did you manage to control that? as an emotion, if you like, that kind of... Well, it's an ongoing battle. You become better at it, but it's yep. always there. Mm. Um, I suppose when you've lost a bit of money doing it, that's mm. a fantastic way of teaching you not to do yeah, it again. Yeah. You know, it's the Einstein you know, definition of man is to keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. Right. So, I mean, if you keep on doing something stupid and it costs you money, if you carry on doing it, mm. that is madness. Mm. Um, it's... But again, it's just part of that... You've, you're seeing it as a long-term process. I never judge my daily results. I'll never look at less than weekly mm. because, I, you know, I, I said to you in a conversation earlier, I, I do a lot of meditation. And the more I do trading, the more it's the equivalent to my meditation. You've got to have absolutely no opinion and you've got to have no ego. As soon as you invest ego in, in your belief, mm. <clears throat> the market should do this, basically because I say it should, mm. then you're cooked. Because mm. the thing is, you know, I, at university I was taught classical economics and it's lots of rational individuals making decisions in their own self-interest, which is complete bollocks. <laughs> you know, oh. And, oh, there you go. <laughs> the economic police have come I, to yeah. take me away. I think, I think uh, Oxford University must be on the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I've got a, a lot of middle-aged dons are going to come and give me a kicking. Okay, so just uh, not to panic, everyone. We're, we're safe and sound. But, you know, we all know that it's... I mean, for me, markets are looking at pulses of fear and greed. Mm. And you get all sorts of groupthink... Mm. And you get the fact that a move will confirm itself, and mm. then you get all. And the secret to doing this well, and first of all, you always enter a market when it's quiet and get out when it's noisy. You know, because I mean, all the suckers come in at the end of the move. You know, you get a FOMO thing, and everyone goes, "Oh, I'm missing out." Right. The great thing is, on my screens at home, I've got 38 markets. So I mean, there are constant moves I'm missing. Mm. Yeah. So I, mm. I couldn't care less. Well, so I, I guess on that point, so just so the audience is a bit more familiar with, well, I guess two things. Yeah. What is it specifically that that you trade now, yeah. Yeah. and also how do you trade? Right. In terms of so amplify, we obviously start the training process with a global macro overview, yeah. cross asset class using fundamentals and technicals. But how yeah. do you develop that? Okay. For yourself, it's um, a very individual thing. I, I know. When I left here, and I say, you know the. Mm just to promote the brand. <laughs> Amplify gave me a fantastic grounding, but I then spent a year deconstructing it and finding that it's something that suited my personality. It's essential mm. that you find a style of trading that suits you mm. and a market that suits you mm. is equally important. Yep. I mean, for example, personally, because I trade futures, I trade oil and gold very well. Mm. Well, he says modestly. I trade, you know, I make money doing it. Yep. I'm good with US indices. For the life of me, bonds I cannot trade at all. Mm. And as Clint Eastwood famously says in a Dirty Harry movie, a man's got to know his limitations. And yeah. could I learn to become a good bond trader? Maybe, maybe not. You know, I'm already a middle-aged get. I mean, life's too short. If yeah. you find something that works for you, mm. you know, I'm not here seeking as a thrill seeker. Mm. I'm here to earn some corn. Yeah. Because um, you go through, everyone goes through this transition. We all do the same thing. Yeah. Early in your trading career, you seek complexity. As someone who uses a lot of technicals, oh, I'll just get that one more indicator. Mm. You know, that will reveal everything. You end up piling loads of stuff on your screen. Mm. As you become more experienced, yep. you have to strip it all down. Because mm. for technicals, you need volatility, volume, oscillator, and something showing a trending market. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, the first thing you've got to know when you come in the morning is what's, what is the market? Is it trending? Is it choppy? Mm. Is it range bound? Mm. If you don't know that, 
you've got no chance because mm. you know as you know best than me mm. something that works brilliantly is in a trending market is catastrophic right. in a reversion to the mean market yeah. and that, that's what we were talking about earlier was this idea I think when you when you come in to rationalize and put into context that day yeah and that every day is unique yes. yes there is a as I will teach people there's a kind of a hierarchy of macro yeah. themes yeah like the ongoing trade war will be present and apparent for a number of months but the point is is that it goes through this ebbs and flows we just had a brexit comment come out yeah. if the pound drops two three percent all of a sudden yeah. that becomes the focal point for yes. sentiment and so every day like you're rightly saying it's, it's almost this this evolution of being confident in the fact that actually i can adapt totally. to the market conditions but i guess this is experience and talk. also it's a great thing I mean, why, if you can get it right, trading is a great career, particularly in the environment we're in. Mm. I was saying earlier, I don't tend to trade August mm. because it's very light volume. I mean, because I, I, I do a lot of swing trading, but there's, in August, I shorten my time frames mm. because obviously low volume, you'll get lots of random spikes, yep. stuff chops around all over the place. If you catch a move, it will tend to be short lived. Mm. Um, as I say, you've got to know your markets. You've got to know your strengths. Mm. And don't try and do too many different sorts of trades. You've got to find a couple of things that work for you. Mm -hmm. There are guys that make, have extraordinary careers doing one thing, mm. and that's great. Mm. You know, I, as I say, I have a wife, two kids, and an expensive lifestyle to support. You want something that mm. you can feel confident yeah. at the start of the month. Actually, I'm not going to end up having to give my house right. away. And so, and so then this leads on to, to con the main point. Yeah. It's like what you finished there. You want to be confident, yes. And actually, that is the, you know, as long with, of course, discipline. Yeah. But having the confidence, this is what really will define performance. And it is. Like with anything, like with a top elite athlete, you know, they're all very good. Yes. Um, but the difference between the winner and the loser yeah. is a state of mind often rather than a technical it is. performance. But it's got to be reasoned confidence. It's not, yes, you know, I, I meet course. a lot of people have an awful lot of confidence in themselves, yeah, which yeah. is not borne out by anything. with the real. But I mean, mm. at, at the end of the day, you're playing probabilities and you've got to set yourself up. I mean, for example, one of the best lessons I learned here, because originally when I traded here, we were given full futures contracts, and you had to start with one contract, mm. the other. You, you had to focus on limiting risk, which meant my stops were far too tight. Mm. And the biggest way to, or one of the key ways of losing money is to have, to have tight stops, mm. which may sound counterintuitive, but you know, at the end of the day, when you're looking for a market to drop into a zone that you can enter, it's it's mm. a range, and you've got to be prepared to take some heat. Mm. You've got to be prepared to, for it to move against you a bit, and you know, if necessary, scale in or whatever. Mm. But just so that you can enter a market with a high probability of it working in your favour, or a, a probability that works financially at the end of the month. Because mm. I mean, this is a game of probabilities at the end of the day, and the yep. part of it's like another key lesson that's interesting is, and it, again, an advantage of being slightly older is, you know, Oscar Wilde said experience is the name we give our mistakes. The only reason you have some wisdom later in life is not that you're any smarter, but you've made every mistake in the book and you've turned around and gone, do you know what? Mm. Actually, that doesn't work. Mm. A key thing people can do, say you have a 10 grand account and you make 50% in two months, the natural thing people think is, if I put 100 grand in there, I'll also make 50%. Mm. Doesn't work that way. You'll mm. almost certainly lose all your money because psychologically it just changes what you do. I mean, I was actually approached um, a few months ago by someone saying, would I trade some of their money and some of their clients' right. money? I was not remotely interested yep. because, first of all, you get far less return for equal risk. You feel all the extra pressure of looking after someone else's cash. And it's enough. The margins between success and failure are so fine in this mm. that anything that shifts your, yeah, yeah. your personal outlook, even 5%, yeah. is enough to turn you from a winning trader into someone yeah. who literally craters. Mm. And unless you're on it, for example, you know, I've got two young kids. If I'm really tired, I mean, luckily, you know, I come to my place in London, can trade from there, so I can get away from it. But if I'm tired, I don't trade. 
Yeah. The best decision you can make as a trader often is to do nothing. Yeah. Or if yeah. I'm in a swing trade, don't watch it once you're in because you, mm. you know, if you're in a good position and it comes massively against you, you know, for a time, the natural thing is to go, oh, that's it, I'm going to mm. get out. Um, you know, it's very important to retain a sense of, of detachment. I never make trade decisions in real time. I'll always use limit orders because mm. unless there's it, there, it meets my criteria for getting into a trade, mm. then don't do it. Mm. And we all like to think, you know, we're smarter than the next guy. The fact is, the market chews each of us up. Uh, there's a guy I deal with in the States. He says it's an equal opportunity dream killer. <laughs> and it's true and you know you've got to find the sort of trading that suits you whether you're primarily a fundamentalist or a technician mm. you've got to find the markets that suit you also down to little things chat rooms for example I was saying to you earlier mm. I've, you know, I've got live feeds to the states and stuff and people are throwing out chat ideas I never I, it's just not something that suits me I like to make my own decisions for some people the yep. the collective part of that is incredibly important the sense of mm. community people throwing out ideas my cynical attitude is if there's a 97% failure rate I make the assumption that 9 out of 10 things I'm listening to are not worth it mm. but there's, they're both equally valid views it's whatever suits you if you're someone that likes being a lone wolf you know, not to, then you must follow that path. Well, if you're someone that needs that group yeah. vibe then follow that and I think it's like you said a moment ago about I know it's a bit cliche, but it's understanding self and yeah. what your strengths and your weaknesses are and how you operate, what's your emotional cues and all these different things. But it is a journey in self. It's a bit yeah. like the Conrad novel, Heart of Darkness, that was then turned into Apocalypse Now. And it's about someone journeying down a river into, in the book, Darkest Africa, to find an evil General Kurtz. But it's actually a metaphor for a journey into your own soul, to mm. look at your own heart of darkness. Mm. And in many ways, trading is that because it's a study in your own fears. We all project an image. It's like when you're on a first date, you put on this pantomime of who you are. You know, you're right. not jealous, you're not angry, you're not grumpy, you're not tight with money. I don't know, I haven't you, done that in a long yeah, time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're this wonderful person that you can't believe no one else has snapped up. Yeah. The great thing about the market is there's no hiding from it. Mm. You know, it either works or it doesn't. Mm. Now, there's a more nuanced aspect that you can do terrible trades that make money and very mm. good trades that lose, but mm. you, and you've got to develop that understanding. But the great thing about it, it's, it's very humbling. Yep. You know, you can't escape from the fact that if you make a terrible mistake, it is there on your bottom line at the yeah, end yeah. of the day or whenever you want to look at it. Yeah. But that's a great way of learning. Yeah. Actually, I mean, that's, it's almost like that's, that's actually what I love about markets. It's yes. like even for my role, which is more, I guess, from an analysis point of view, it's the fact that you know you're accountable in terms of you have a view and I have to express my reasoning behind it yeah. and then it either works or it doesn't I'm either right or I'm wrong in that yeah, sense yeah, yeah. the same for a trader it's that pay instant payoff is and, actually and it's actually intellectually really interesting which I'll be honest when I first started this I married someone much younger and prettier than me and as a middle-aged <laughs> poor git you think well, I, better, I better impress her with something and thought you know I'll do it hopefully to earn some money because uh, you know I'd, mm. I'd invested very success, well, successfully for a long, quite a long time, and but actually it's it's a fascinating thing. And mm. whatever your your preference is, some people are very highly mathematical and will look at it as a series mm. of algorithms or whatever. I'm not. I obviously use maths when you look at hourly price movement ranges or daily price movement ranges and factor that into your entry points and exit points. But for me, I find the psychology of it fascinating. As yep. I say, it is pulses mm. of fear and greed, and you're mm. watching a mass conglomeration of human irrationality. <laughs> and I find that really, really interesting. Yep. Okay. Well, well, look. The to wrap things up. Yeah. Because you want to keep people engaged. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Sorry. My fault, not your fault. Um, but what? Uh, not to put you on the spot too yep. much. But what would you? What would be then if someone was? still either looking to learn to trade or in the infancy of their kind of uh, development in terms of their trading what's your kind of one piece of advice that you'd give to people having now done this for several years um if you're doing it to earn the next mortgage payment do something else because you've got no chance if yep. you're doing something to 
find a fascinating way to survive in uncertain times and you've got the patience and the discipline then it's a fantastic way to earn a living good well I'm not even going to add any more on that that's a good way to close so let me just quickly transition so guys I hope you found that um, interesting uh, obviously do check out even the the original documentary uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll reshare that and you can see uh, the journey of Ben I guess from where where he started with us a couple of years back to where he's got to now uh, do feel free to leave a comment as well on the video if there's any questions at all I uh, would be more than happy to help but hopefully you found that interesting thank you again to Ben for coming in uh, I'm sure we'll keep in touch and, and hear other updates soon okay thank you very much guys